it's very common to try to learn cybersecurity and fail and then beat yourself up and just thinking that, you know, you're not committed enough, right? You're too lazy. But in reality, nothing can be further from the truth. If you want to finally stick to learning cybersecurity, really there's five essential steps that you need to learn. You're simply following the wrong process. You're doing things wrong. It's not really your fault. Now, the thing is, if you don't get clear on these five steps, on these five things here, then you will continue to repeat that cycle of trying to learn cybersecurity, feeling like a failure, beating yourself up, you know, and then going back to trying to learn cybersecurity again. And yeah, it's a it's just a pretty awful cycle. So I definitely want to help you guys avoid that at all costs. And also along your journey with learning cybersecurity, sticking to it, there's eventually going to come a point in time where you're going to be ready to interview for jobs. And definitely at that point, you're going to want to be armed with the top 10 questions that you need to know to ace a cybersecurity pen testing interview. So check out the description below and you'll find very detailed answers to all these top 10 interview questions and some additional resources to take it one step further. Now, the first thing that you really want to get clear on is you want to start with your why up front, absolutely before you do anything else, before you move on. And really the reason for that is I could tell you, you know, from personal experience that I wasted so much time in the beginning when I was learning this. Like I said, it took me multiple years to get into this field because I wasted so much time, right? Because I wasn't clear on my why. So some of you guys may know the story, but if you don't, I started out in IT. That's where I first landed a job. And it wasn't until I was able to to realize, you know, why do I want to learn cybersecurity? Why do I want to get into the cybersecurity field? And I really had to think back to those early days in college when I was playing around with this stuff completely outside of the classroom, you know, with Metasploit and, you know, I was just reading articles on cybersecurity and I was absolutely loving everything that I was learning. And I compared that to my college courses where I was bored half the time, right? I, I, I was learning stuff and, and it wasn't holding my attention, but this learning that I was doing outside of of class, it was just so engaging to me and, and just playing around with this stuff. And I knew like this was definitely the field specifically that I wanted to get into, not even just cybersecurity, but I wanted to be a pen tester, right? I remember seeing the commercials on, on TV back then where they're talking about all these cyber threats that were emerging. And I wanted to do that important work of securing the, you know, being at the forefront of cybersecurity and all these things that are happening to be able to act as an adversary to do like red teaming and, and pen testing and all, and all this stuff. Right. And, you know, when I was working in, in the field, uh, you know, in it and the stuff that I was doing was like, I, I was still, I was still interested in, in it, the technology aspect of it, but I wasn't doing what I ultimately wanted to do. And it was a huge motivator to me to know, like to really bring back those, those experiences of, you know, this is exactly what I want to do. And this is why I want to do it. And that really helped me come up with my goals. Like what, you know, what specifically am I looking to do and how am I going to, you know, come up with my own game plan. But the first thing that you need to start with is your why, and that's going to help you figure out how to come up with a plan for everything. Right. So that's, that leads me in perfectly into the second point, which is come up with a plan now that you have that stuff established. And remember, this is very important to know. I think too many people get caught up in perfection. Do not be a perfectionist. If you are, then just realize that tendency in yourself because your plan does not have to be perfect. The better thing is that you actually have a plan to begin with than to have the perfect plan. Because here's the thing, if you're coming up with this on your own, you don't even know what the perfect plan would be anyways. I mean, how could you, right? You don't have all the data, all the information, but you don't necessarily need that perfect plan either. So just to give you guys some insight into what my plan was at the time is I simply started off with OWASP WebGoat. Um, if some of you OGs might know that one is a really old uh, web app that you could spin up in a, in a virtual machine and you could download like a VM that had it and you, or you could set it up yourself and you 
it was a training platform to practice exploiting web vulnerabilities. Actually, you didn't truly exploit them. It was kind of more like a if you entered the perfect payload correct answer in, it would say you got it right. And if you didn't, it would say that, you know, whatever it would say, like an error message or something. So basically I wasn't actually exploiting that app, but it was, you was still teaching me hands-on and it was definitely better than not doing anything at all for sure. It definitely taught me a lot along the way. And, you know, keep in mind, this was way back in the day. So there wasn't all these awesome platforms that exist today, like try hack me and all this stuff that is available. You know, there certainly wasn't any kind of like mentoring or anything like that that I could just find off of YouTube and all these content creators that exist today. And the other thing that I did was hack the box. I, I did that a lot. So my, my game plan basically to break it down for you was OWASP WebGo, hack the box, and IPSEC videos. So on hack the box, I would, you know, I would try to figure out some of those boxes. Usually, to be honest with you, I would just default to giving up after like 30 minutes and then watching the IPSEC walkthrough on how to do it. I did learn a lot of tools and techniques along the way. And um, that was the next best thing I could do, probably watching IPSEC content. And, you know, since I didn't have a mentor, I could learn from his videos. And hopefully, you know, I'm able to provide something similar to you guys with, you know, watching some of my videos, especially if you watch the hands-on videos that I do, like uh, the the walkthroughs I've been doing on Try Hack Me, where I'm going at the box completely, you know, for the first time, unedited on anything, right? Just to show you what some of that process looks like. I've done numerous walkthrough and guide videos on this channel as well. So hopefully, hopefully that can really help you guys along the journey as well, just as IPSEC videos has helped me a lot when I was first learning. And I, I was getting hands-on, I was getting practice in, and I did do some of the boxes on my own, obviously, as well. Uh, so, but that was that was the extent, the full extent of my plan. Uh, I didn't really have anything else other than that. Like I said, a lot of these platforms didn't even exist. So the most important part was to have a plan in the first place, right? If I was just doing random stuff like a lot of my peers were, then I wouldn't be in the same situation. So number three is to definitely schedule out your time prioritize cybersecurity. If you're truly serious, you need to do it first. If you're truly serious about this, this is stuff that um, I've been telling my coaching clients a lot lately because a lot of them have expressed that, you know, they really want to learn this stuff, but they can never find the time in the day to actually put in the time they need for this stuff. And what I suggest to them, what I suggest to you guys as well, is that, you know, figure out what is the most serious thing in your life? Like, what are you prioritizing the most? What's most important to you right now? And if you're not sure, what do you feel the most pain towards? What is the thing that you dread doing the most every day, right? That's probably a good indication that it's important to you. So whatever that is, maybe it's not cybersecurity, but if it is, if it is changing your career, maybe, or if it is getting that higher paying job within this field, then that's absolutely what you need to make a priority. And you need to do that as the first thing that you do every single day. So you can make sure that no matter what, there is no excuse. There is nothing that prevents you from doing the daily work that you need to do to get to where you need to be. So number four would be to trust the process. Now that you've established when you're going to work on this stuff, you know why you're working on it. You have a plan. You have a roadmap that you created. Now the next thing you need to do is just trust that process and follow through with it no matter what, you know? It won't happen overnight is something that you need to understand as well. It took me years um, of, you know, since I came up with the plan, it took me years of executing in order to get the job, right? To, to land in as a junior pen tester. Now, the thing is, obviously I say this all the time, I was very inefficient on how I was doing everything. There was so much room for improvement with all of that, which is why I would say number five is definitely the people that will succeed faster are always the ones that have a mentor. This is why, honestly, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. There's things that I'm trying to learn right now. And just so you guys know, I, I personally, I have a coach that I pay $1,500 every single month uh, for his expertise, for his guidance, for his coaching, because I know that it's the value that he brings me is worth so much more than that. And the amount of time I can save, how quickly I can progress in what I'm trying to learn is going to be so much faster to the point that $1,500 a month is a very small price to pay. That's where I'm at personally. Maybe where you're at in your life in terms of 
things like that and how much you could invest in your time, how much time you have, how much energy, how much money, how much effort, all of that, that might be different. And, and that's completely fine, but you want to find a mentor, right? And it's going to, it's going to help you, especially if it's something you're serious about. I don't have a mentor for every single thing I do. That would be a bit impractical, right? But when it comes to things that you're really serious about, you want to get a mentor. And I'm not even saying that, oh, you guys have to work with me or anything like that. So I really don't want you guys to misunderstand there. You know, basically whoever you decide to, to work with, find a mentor in this field. Maybe you know someone personally that, um, is a, a friend of a friend or something like that that works in cybersecurity and you have like direct local access to that person. I absolutely say, yeah, go in um, and pick, pick that guy's brain, network with him a little bit and see if uh, he can mentor you because that's going to greatly shortcut a bunch of the mistakes. All the mistakes they made, you get to benefit off of that. And the one of the biggest benefits of a mentor is they can look at what you're currently doing and they can say, oh, I would just tweak this here. I would tweak that. And instead of doing this, you should do that. And it's just very obvious to them. It jumps out at the top of their head. And they're just going to say that because they know exactly what, um, they, they have that foresight basically. So definitely leverage that. Absolutely. And I want to know like down in the comment section below, how will you incorporate these five steps to, you know, switch up what you're doing right now? Because if you keep doing the things you've always done, you will get the same results that you always get. So what are you going to do differently? Let me know. I'd love to know down in the comments section below. And, you know, to help you come up with your game plan, if you're truly not sure what kind of path you should, you know, create now that you've established all these things, go ahead and check out my video on screen now, proven cybersecurity learning path to become a pen tester. And uh, yeah, I think it should certainly help you get more clarity on that. So I'll see you right over in that video.